Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors, America's only daily outdoor TV show. Your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. Glad you're here this Friday morning as we're getting into the month of September already. It's the second day of September. We're glad you're here. We appreciate your viewership. Our weather brought to us by Gulf Coast Air Conditioning. Drew Pollard and the hardworking crew up in Southport taking care of everyday comfort needs. And it's been a, a warm, muggy summer. <laughs> Thank goodness for AC. We're looking at the high today of 87, low of uh, 73, water temperature 88. I know exactly what it was yesterday. Take a look at the river readings brought to us by Mountain Dew. Get out and do with a Mountain Dew. The Apalachicola at Bluntstown is even five foot. The Choctatchee at Caribbean a 4.5. So we're looking at some, uh, you guys were dodge this weather. We've got you know, about a 50 to 60% chance of rain throughout the Florida Panhandle. Our tide chart brought, brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn here on 23rd Street. We're getting a decent tide today, but like I mentioned yesterday, look at tomorrow's tide, strong, Outgoing tide tomorrow it looks really good for that. The high is going to be 143, like I said, and lows at 110. All right, let's go and do our fishing game time today with it being on Friday. We're looking at a, a time at 419 or 619 this morning and this afternoon, 445 to 645. Wind direction south, southeast at about 8. All right, let's take a break and we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. Glad you're with us this morning. Hope you're planning to do some good outdoor activities this weekend with some friends and family. We're talking about some good, cool things to do. We really haven't talked uh, about hunting and all lately, but well, we've got to get into those food plots, and a lot of people are already starting on them. And I'm going to share this little, uh, these pictures with you right here. This, uh, a lot of folks are planning this outfit out, out toward the uh, Bristol and Tallahassee area called the Future of Hunting in Florida. To try to really encourage young people. I've mentioned them. I had them on. I talked about them on the show before. The Future of Hunting, and they have a Facebook page. And I, here it is right here. I'm gonna just go to their. Here's their Facebook page, The Future of Hunting in Florida. And uh, so this is. They did a. This is a week ago. Okay, this group right here. Yeah, I'm going to show you. I'm just going to scroll through the pictures of what I'm going to do and sort of. Last week, they just, uh, they all met down there. Uh, okay, let me see. They're in Gulf Hammock. They all work, that's the group that did it. They plowed the fields. Okay, they're setting up. Last week, a week ago, they were setting up the fields. And uh, you see, the, this is fun kind of work. You're bush hogging. You just, I'm just going to show you what they did. Uh, and let the kids, let the young kids, uh, not the young ones, but let the ones that if, drive a tractor, uh, of course, safely if they've had experience. But just getting, this is just a good sequence of, of them getting everything ready and planting it. Okay, so, all right. And they're getting to be a part of it, loading the tractor back up and uh, and uh, going back. Anyway, so you see, so now, so now what happened, the following a week later, I'm going to show you the picture of what they did a week later. They said, actually, the same fields they were at, okay, this is a week later. Look, uh, you're already starting to see, I'm going to zoom in, you're already starting to see it's coming up. That's the thing about when you plant these food plots, you start seeing some results uh, right away. So that's, uh, okay, and see, again, this is a great food. Uh, right here, you're shooting down an alley, and you, they're going to come out of the woods, and jump in there and eat a little bit. You got your, you got your stand right there, and they, it's already coming up right here in this field. I see this every year when I do hours, but I, some of y'all that don't do it, I'm just going to show you how to do it. The future of hunting in Florida. Thank y'all for Look at that. We've had some good rain, too. And getting the corn out, getting everything set up. So anyway, just wanted to mention uh, uh, food plots and, and getting everything ready for, uh, for hunting season right around the corner. Now's the time to do it. We've got you know, some good, good soil and everything. So I started looking at that. I started thinking, uh, uh, to myself, I'm behind schedule, which is not unusual for, for me because I'm a place pretty full doing all the things, but uh, all the fun things we're doing. But also, uh, what hit me like a, a, a sledgehammer, firewood. I don't know how many of y'all started to think about cutting firewood. I, I don't have any firewood stacked up, and I always uh, you know, try to get it cut this time of year so it's going to dry out for a couple of months. and. And I realized I haven't had time to get in the woods and cut firewood. I don't know if you've been able to do it, but 
I, I just uh, want to encourage you, if, you haven't, if you've been like me, just forgot about it. Of course, it's been really hot. you got to go do it in the morning. But anyway, get ready. We, gotta get, we, we have got to get our firewood cut or it's going to be a cold January and February. Okay, now, let's jump from the woods to the bay. And I was talking about, I want to go ahead and cover this. It's been on my mind about scalloping. And I, I feel real strong about this. I, we're, we're at a point where we just don't have a lot of scallops, and, and I don't, I just don't see it getting any better unless we make some, some, some steps. We as an out, outdoorsman and FWC and all do some, do some things to sort of preserve our scallop population in St. Joe Bay. So I came up with this plan. Uh, this is what, this is what I would do, uh, Panhandle Outdoors plan, uh, to preserve scallop. P O P P S pops. Panhandle Outdoors plan to preserve the scallops. And so we can, future generations, like in hunting, that one right there, we can do scalloping. I wrote down a couple of things. I think one of the first things we need to do is, is close the season for one year. And I know you say that oh, scallops only live one year, but all those scallops that live, all those that live that one year can reproduce, and that would get the whole bay popul repopulated again from that one year of all those scallops. So I think closing the bay would be good. I know it's going to, it's going to be uh, tough on some businesses and all, but we're going to have to make some sacrifices. So just close the bay. Number two, uh, re-nourish. I wrote this down. Uh, re-nourish the bay. Bring in some scallops from Stenhatchee and, and Cedar Key. That area, those areas down there have thousands of scallops. And everybody I saw down that way were getting, us, getting limits all the time. Here, hardly anybody's getting limits. I bet uh, less than 15% of people are getting limits from what I could gather. Uh, number two, just re-nurse. Uh, number, number three, uh, let's keep, okay, let's go back to re-nursing. I know it's gonna be expensive to re-nourish and we need to, act, you, got, you know, you gotta pay, you gotta, you know. Uh, my suggestion is take this boat ramp fee, $20 for every boat that launches in, at a St. Joe Marina. Take that boat launch money, put it in a pot and buy scallops and bring them in for the future, okay? That makes a lot of sense. They're making a ton of money off that boat ramp, and uh, that money could go toward re-nursing bay because that's why the people are coming into that boat ramp to go into St. Joe Bay. So that's a win-win for everybody, and that will continue for years down the road. People continue coming in, and you can go charging for twenty dollars, or pretty soon you start thirty dollars a boat launch fee, uh, and you'll see that. Uh, the, the third thing I wrote down: have a designated area in St. Joe Bay, off limits to scalloping. Now, this is very common in other areas where uh, trying to preserve things, uh, uh, oyster beds and all that. So have an area that just have it marked off. They've done this before, uh, a little bit at a time where they start trying to harvest them. But have, a, have a safe zone where they can actually, uh, actually won't be harmed. That way the, old, the older ones can go ahead and reproduce each year and, uh, and that would spread out. So that would be number three. And number, and number four would be to to get a, get a survey going each year. FWC used to be really good at doing these surveys or the population surveys. Let's get back to doing that. And that way, when, and that way you can see if we ever have to uh, another uh, replenish it and all, we, we can replenish it for the coming, coming year and all. You can tell you, got, you need to do a survey before the season starts and one after the season starts. And again, use that boat ramp fee money to, to, pay, to pay for that. So that is a good plan right there. I've thought long and hard about it. That's the Panhandle Outdoor Plan to Preserve Scallops in St. Joe Bay. Sounds good, doesn't it? Let's take a break. We'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. Glad you're with us this morning. Let's take a look at our uh, situation here. Uh, we've talked about this before. I want to show you to both sides of it now. This is surf fishing, and this has come from a, on a Panama, Panama, Panhandle Surf Fishing page. And, this guy fished at Open Beach. He had, six, he had six lines out with only one other car in the parking lot. People started showing up later in the morning, and this couple decided to join us, set up chairs at the water's edge right between our third and fourth rod. So anyway, uh, people never cease to amaze me, or maybe I'm antisocial. Okay, so this couple came in, and here's it. Okay, you see what happened. And I, let me go ahead and tell you my, my feelings on this. So, you know, I'm a, I'm a strong, uh, proponent of fishermen and fishing. I feel also strong about giving uh, folks a right to their right to the beach and also here, here's my situation right here. 
I personally, and I, it's not a law or anything, but I never put out more than three poles. So this guy put out six poles. Here's these people coming down here, and, and uh, it, uh, you know, so I see both sides. I, it was, folks want to get, it was rude of them to get right in the middle of it, but also that guy, as a fisherman, we don't need to, you know, go out and spread out, you know, 50, 60 yards down the beach just to surf fish. Uh, especially, we, and what we got, and what I do, I've, I've learned to go there at daybreak, and by nine or ten, I'm 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 breaking camp. So, we got to get in the habit of doing that. Folks will be coming in, especially now with all these folks coming down. And all. So I just wanted to mention that with you. Uh, so one more, that okay? One more quick thing. I got this uh, email. I'm gonna share it with you. This is from Brett Donner. Brett won last. Uh, hey Winston, thank you again for the Tarpon Dock seafood while I was there. I bought another pound of grouper. We had it for dinner tonight, and it was out of this world. For some reason, free grouper from Tarpon Dock Seafood tastes better than a grouper that I catch. Hope you don't mind, I posted on Facebook, and thank you and Panhandle Outdoors. Plus, I gave a plug to Tarpon Dock Seafood. Have a great day, and do something for your fellow man as you always do, Brett Donner. And Brett sent some pictures. Check it out, folks, does that not look good? Some good fried grouper? I mean, I could eat that for breakfast right now. Look at that. Brett, thanks for sharing that with us. And here he is at Tarpon Dock. That's a good loyal viewer. Look at that. Look at all that food down there. And one more quick picture just to get you to remind you what these are. These are the Catawba worms that we love to freshwater fish with. Okay? And speaking of fishing, I, I'm going to be setting up for the uh, Friday fishing forecast. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and uh, I got a little video of us catching, so just go catch a little nice mess of trout to eat for supper tonight. So, so yeah, we're going to run this video and we're going to come back and do the uh, Friday famous fishing forecast. Be right back. Pulling out a pretty bayou. Good morning, Captain Bill Barlow. Good morning, Coach. How you doing? I'm doing great. Appreciate the uh, invitation this morning. All right, let's go out and get us a big redfish. How, how you been doing lately? Been fishing been pretty decent? Uh, I hadn't really been that much. The weather's <laughs> not right, and I'm working out in the oyster bar all the time. So I, the only day I get to go is on Sunday. Uh, well, we got the uh, we got a little fog this morning. Yeah, we're not worried about that. I got the machine right here. That's great. Pretty bayou. Oh, I got this one on here. On, you see he's on a mirror down. This is a little bit bigger one right here. So I had him there a minute. He's probably tired. What do you think? About 13 and a half, 14. Oh, yeah. Good trout. Pretty trout. Pretty trout.
Sorry, short pain a bit. I got a whole different look. <laughs> That's nice, we're trying to catch some redfish, but this bayou is full of trout. Oh, this one's a little bigger. He hit it right away, didn't he? Oh, yeah. No, all right. 16, 17. That's a keeper. Are yeah. you want them for dinner? Oh, right, Bill's going to pull my fish out. Tell it, rubber net right there, Bill. Yeah, rubber landing net is the trick. Yeah. You throw the lure in there, you just get it right out. Look how fast you got it off. out. Yeah. Good deal. Nice little trout. Yeah. Like he's been beat up before. He had been hit on that. Yeah. Look, look at that. You think something hit him? Yeah, something's porpoise or something. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, welcome back. Hope you enjoyed that. Or maybe you want to go fishing this afternoon. It'll take long. Just go there for quickly about one or two hours and just catch a mess of fish for supper. Sounds simple, don't it? Let's get our drawing, okay? Topper Dock Seafood. Hope you enjoyed much as Brett Donner enjoyed his. The winner of the $20 gift certificate from Panama City, Peyton Watson. Congratulations. And winner of the Big Red Snapper. And don't forget the Labor Day sale on our Panhandle Outdoor Shop. You get a free decal and 10% off if you pick it up from Travis's house. From Caraville, Ger Gerald Farmer. All right, that takes care of that. This is, uh, you're gonna appreciate this. I, the night, always the night before, I, I write down the fishing port on a, you know, real fancy yellow sheet of legal pad. I just said, well, to hand write it out. Well, last night I was going to, doing the Panhandle Outdoor uh, plan to preserve the scallops and I wrote it down. So I normally, I just picked it up and put it in my book. Well, guess what I forgot? The fishing report, because I normally, subconsciously, I put my yellow sheet in there on, on a Thursday night. So anyway, so I jotted down some quick notes from the, from the fishing report uh, that I remember from last night. So I'm going to sort of a wing a lot of it. So basically, I, was, I did get a good report from around Calford. I'm looking for Calford Island. It's freshwater. J.B. Hillard uh, catching a mess of fish over there. Uh, Calford landing us south of 20 on the Choctatcha River. That area is good there. And also, uh, looking down here at the Holmes Creek area. Okay, here we go. Uh, the Choctatcha River, just, that's just special in there. I mean, there's really some good fishing all through here. And, okay, okay. And here's Ebro. Okay, you can always put in it here. Uh, we used to uh, really do a lot of uh, serious fishing. I'll tell you where we would go. See right here in the center of the page? We went up on this fork right here, right there, in that fork, and it would come back in this area here, and we went way up into here. Tommy, the late Tommy Clemens and I, and uh, would, would do that, okay? And then all, here's Calford Island, where I just mentioned Calford, and uh, all around that island right there, you can uh, you can do some serious fishing right there. You know, some good looking places. Calford Island, so the fishing is really good there. That's below Highway 20. Okay, now, also on fresh water, I wrote down the, all the way on the other end, I won't go on, on, on Google Earth. Uh, the Carabelle River has had some good catches. I was gonna to talk to Sea Quarters, but I know they've been catching them out of the Carabelle River coming out of Tate Sail into, uh, into the bay and right, coming right there by Sea Quarters Marina. So fresh water, those are good. Uh, and also, uh, I, I was gonna mention about Drew Benton, about bass fishing. Drew Benton just finished up his uh, classic. He finished fourth in the in the biggest uh, tournament they had this past week, and we're going to try to get Drew to come on the show, and also Steve Gross, who actually actually was one of the officials at the tournament. We're going to try to get him to come on the show and talk about his experiences. So uh, we're looking forward to some really good guests coming up pretty soon. Okay, now let's get to saltwater inshore. I did uh, again. I want to talk about redfish. The redfish bite has been so good, uh, but it's been this week has been really good. I remember last night writing this down. It's been really good on top quarter plugs, and because the water uh, has been calm, and they're just hearing that plop, and they're attacking it. So the top water fishing uh, for reds has been really good. Drum fishing has been good. Again, I want to talk about the bridge fishing. I mentioned a lot the bridge fishing, structure fishing, and wade fishing. I'm going to get Brock Meyer to come on the show next week. Brock Meyer has done so well. Uh, you know, he's been on the show before. He came down from North Alabama a couple years ago. He's turned into, he's got a fishing guide business now. 
And I'm so proud of him for what all he's done. And he just uh, has a, just a, he, he loves to help people catch fish. And, and uh, he's one of those that come in from out of town and learn the business and learn how to catch fish and share it with other people. So I'm going to get Brock to come on next week. Uh, we're going to run out of time. I did write down again. Wade fishing has been good, and he's been doing a lot. Surf, the surf fishing itself is going to start picking up. This is September. Right now, there's still a lot of catfish out there. Water temperature is still hot. Surf fishing will be picking up uh, in about two weeks. In fact, we'll, we'll go and call it in two weeks, uh, but October is the time for the Pompano run in the, in the fall. So, and also the King Michael right near shore. King Michael being caught, not a lot of big ones, but they're all catching kings. Uh, it's been good. Uh, offshore, not much going on really. Uh, most of the captains are sort of drawn back on, on their business. So uh, I'm going to run out of time again, but I just wanted to, uh, to uh, tell you all that if you get a chance, just get outdoors and do something. If you can't catch any fish, run down to Tropping Dock and buy some grouper and put it on the grill. Y'all have a great weekend. Again, we appreciate the viewership. You do something good today for a good fellow man and or lady. I want to say that in okay, case for everybody. Have a great weekend. God bless. Thanks for watching America's only daily outdoor TV show, Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester, featuring hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.